Hi, I'm Curious Cass, and this is Curiosity Junkie. Today's guest is on the ultimate self-love journey. His journey is about transition, love, and change. So join us as we talk openly and honestly about his transgender journey. Please welcome Sebastian Ailes. You do like to be called Sebs, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just want to say I'm so grateful for the opportunity to sit down and have this very open, frank conversation with you around the whole transition thing and, and what is that like? And I can't imagine that journey is an easy one. One of the things that really kind of touched me, I thought about your journey and I was like, that's like the ultimate self-love journey because you're being true to you, no matter what other people think, say, do you are really being true to you. Kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. First off, I just want to make sure that you are comfortable talking about everything and anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Whatever cool. you have questions about. <laughs> All right. Well, I got a lot of them for you, so we're going to have fun. <laughs> uh, the first one is, you know, the LBGTQ+. Plus. I'm kind of clueless when it comes to that world. I want to understand it. My whole thing is the curiosity is about understanding the opposite of what I know to be true. What are those letters? What do they stand for? So, I mean, LG, that's lesbian and gay. B, being bisexual. B, T, transgender. Q is just queer, kind of the like umbrella term basically for anybody that's kind of part of the group. And the plus just stands for kind of anybody else that fits on the spectrum outside of being heterosexual. So anybody that thinks of themselves as like asexual or pansexual or God, there's so many terms. I, yeah, I couldn't even name all of them. <laughs> yeah. And you said a couple and I was like, I don't even know what that is. There's so much research <laughs> I need to do to really. Right, right put my brain around all of it. Yeah, there's still, honestly, there's still some that like, I have no idea what they technically mean or things that I feel like I should probably research more into. Like I'm part of the group. I should, I should know a little more. <laughs> right. Right. But you're like, Hey, I'm on my own journey. Let me get through this. And then, right. and then we'll do something else. Okay. <laughs> I originally knew you as a girl, Courtney. Mm -hmm. At what point did you know that you were gay or trans and maybe you identified with gay first and then trans. How old were you? Because I know I've talked to a couple of gay young people and, and I'm talking about like teens and twenties and they mm -hmm. knew around five or six. Yeah. Honestly, I knew like a hundred percent that I liked girls when I was in kindergarten. I, I had my very first crush on one of my like best friends in kindergarten. And honestly, since then, it's just been solidified. You know, like I, I really do like girls. I've never really had an attraction to guys, anything like that. I attempted to date guys in like the junior high, middle school awkward phase. And I was like, yeah, this definitely isn't for me first time that I actually came across the word transgender was uh, 11 years old. Um, so I was in, I believe, sixth grade. I kind of started looking into it more and more. And by eighth grade, I 100% knew that I was transgender. Wow. That's really young. Yeah. And I, I honestly, I think I'm just lucky that I came across some of the words and terms as young as I did, because it kind of helped me be a little more open-minded to the fact that, you know, something was off me living as a girl under Courtney. <laughs> so how awkward, how, I don't, I don't even know what, what the word is I'm looking for. What is that like knowing that you are a boy trapped in a girl's body and you can't really tell anybody at that age? I'm sure you're what, right. I, a little yeah, scared. I, I, didn't, like, I didn't end up telling uh, my parents until... God, I was almost graduated. It was like May of my senior year of high school. So 2013 that I ended up telling them. It was definitely difficult. I mean, it was, I got into a, a pretty low, sad point going into high school because I knew something was off. I kind of knew where I wanted to be in life, but I didn't really know how to get there or what I needed to actually do. 
So I just kind of felt stuck almost. And yeah. it was like stuck in in my own skin, if that makes any sense to you. Yes, yeah. I, I could see where that would bring on possibly some depression because one, I would think you're not sure how your family is going to accept, take, react, however you want to say that, right. to you being really who you know you are. And so you kind of just stay trapped in a body that you don't at all identify with. Right. Yeah, that's, I was more scared to kind of tell my friends than my family almost, because I was like, man, what if they don't accept me? And then I lose all my friends. But then the more and more I thought about it, if they wouldn't accept somebody that's transgender, then why would I want to be their friend in the first place? So I just kind of had to get into the mindset of you really got to do what makes you happy and you'll find people along the way. Yes. You know, really that really accept you and love you for who you are and not just, you know, what you have or what front you can put on. Right. You were like 18, you said? Yeah, I was 18 when I told my my parents. Talk to me about how you how you go about that. Like, what is your process? I know your mom, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is your thought process? How long did it take you to get up to that point where you're like, all right, I got to tell them. Like, I just can't live this way anymore. Right. Honestly, I think it was me like hitting my senior year that I really like kind of made a plan basically to like tell my parents like, uh, you know, Vanessa, huh? she asks a million and one questions about yeah. everything, no matter what it is. Absolutely. So, so you gotta be ready. I, yeah, I basically like the beginning of my senior year, I sat down and looked up everything that I needed to do, basically like in a task line thought of every question she could ask, figured out an answer for it. Like it took me months, months and months of research before I finally said something to her just yeah. so I was prepared, I guess, for all of her questions. And God, there were still some that she asked that I was like, I have no idea. Like, That's a great I don't question. Know, I guess we'll look it up together. <laughs> like, I thought I was prepared and I was not. <laughs> right. Or I don't think you can ever be par- prepared for Vanessa. Like, she just oh, has I great know. questions. She's so inquisitive. Like, she should be the curious junkie <laughs> right <laughs> curator whatever she is the questionator absolutely <laughs> <laughs> you tell her how did you do it how'd you go about it like um, pull her aside I, just have a special time yeah I I finally just uh one day I think it was just me and her home and I sat down at the kitchen table and I was like all right I I need to talk to you and she was like oh okay you know like what's it about we sat down for a second and I finally just kind of held my breath and I was like I'm transgender just kind of stared at her for a second and I mean neither my mom or my dad have really ever been around anything in like the LGBT community so she was just kind of like uh okay so what does that mean like where do we go from here and just kind of wanted me to explain it to her that you know I I don't feel like I am a female in any way shape or form I know how I want to word this so I guess I unfortunately was just born in the wrong body I honestly feel like everything in my brain how I think my mindset is male just have to go from there I guess right right yeah and I, I I do think that because talking to other young people transgender but they do say they they have that feeling of it's not just doesn't connect like yeah it's not right yeah um basically yeah my my mind and my body don't quite match how I feel like they should right right because I can't imagine having my mindset right now and being in a male body right you know like I try to think of it like that like what would it be like yeah no exactly if, if it were me right now and I'm in a male body I would not identify with this brain and this mind at all with that body and how maddening that would be frustrating, yeah. depressing. Like I, I can see all of the emotion and, and just everything that would come with that. And the fear too, that if you tell someone they're going to think you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, Did you have honestly, a little fear with I, that? I was like, how do you even, 
how do you even explain this to somebody? And I, I looked up a whole bunch of like other people's kind of like coming out stories and, you know, like how they worded things and kind of just slowly found what like fit right for me to talk to like my parents or friends or, you know, other family, you know, uh, I don't know. It was, it was definitely rough trying to really figure it out and uh, tell everybody. <laughs> hey. You tell your mom, you tell her by herself first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just her first. So I think what ended up happening, she ended up telling dad, Richard, and then we kind of all three talked about it. I think my dad was a little more like eh, not really understanding, even whenever I was like trying to explain. But I mean, they, they both came around quicker than I thought they would, nice. which I mean, I, now they both are fantastic with pronouns and saying Sebastian, not using my dead name. And yeah. it was, it was definitely rough at first. I, I think I just had to kind of like show them that we're doing this. <laughs> this is I'm moving this forward. Is what's exactly. Yeah. Like this is what's happening. I love you guys. I would love your support, but it's, it's happening regardless kind of thing. Yes. So it, it kind of helped them kind of kick on on board quicker. <laughs> right, right. Like, You're right. like, this is moving this forward. Is so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard you say dead name. Is yeah. that how you like to reference it? That is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sorry I used it. No, you're you're totally fine. It's okay. it's okay. Because if you would have asked, I would have said it anyway. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. Because I really, you know, my fear is that I offend you in some way, and that is absolutely not my intention. So. I think you have the personality where you go, Cass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll let you know if you say anything. <laughs> but honestly, I, I feel like I'm, I'm a pretty good person to talk to. I, I'm open about most of it. Nothing really bugs me or offends me anymore. <laughs> 18, and you are now? 25. 25. So you've been on this for quite a few years. Been on testosterone since August 19th of 2013. Wow. I wonder in my head, I go, it can't be easy. This process cannot be easy, right? It was definitely rough to start. So starting uh, with at least Missouri standards, I'm not sure about other states. I had to go and see a, a therapist, a like specialized therapist in gender dysphoria is what it's uh, like classified as here, which is just basically somebody that specializes in like the LGBT community. So, you know, like this is like their main focus is almost sexuality, like gender preferences, anything like that. Mm -hmm. They kind of focus on. Um, so I had to talk to his name was Michael Henderson, fantastic therapist. He was super, super awesome. I talked to him for about six months. And then he had to specifically write me a letter to a doctor um, so I could start hormone replacement therapy, which is my testosterone. Um, so yeah, I talked to him for a while, got my letter, and then I had to find a specific doctor that would actually prescribe the hormones because Missouri is a very uh, closed-minded state. <laughs> so right? There are very few doctors that will actually prescribe hormones um, and we actually ended up going on the Kansas side of it like right outside of Missouri to this fantastic woman Dr. Glass which mm. she has been nothing but amazing since I met her. I have not had a bad experience like in her doctor's office with any of her nurses or anything like she is fantastic. Her whole practice is awesome, awesome, awesome. Highly recommend her to anybody that's trying to look into anything. But yeah, so she prescribed me testosterone. I did my very first shot in her office. One of her nurses did it for me, explained, you know, how to do everything. I used to do the ones in my thigh, the intramuscular shots. Right. And I have moved to the, uh, I don't know the technical name for it. You put it into your fat instead of your muscle. So it's a lot shorter of a needle. And I do it in my stomach now, which okay. is super, super awesome. Because the needle in my thigh was like this long compared to the needle in my stomach, which is about this. This. <laughs> right yes much more user friendly <laughs> right yeah it definitely makes the uh, application a lot easier. I do it once a week now. Uh, whenever I very first started, I used to do it once every other week, which I feel like kind of threw me off a little bit. I would kind of miss shots or be some, you know, like days late here and there. And then, of course, that just screws up all my emotions. And <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> that was always a fun time. 
Oh my gosh, I can't imagine, right? Like the <laughs> the estrogen fighting yeah, with the I testosterone know. and right. Uh. So after I, you know, did hormones up until last year, I finally got my hysterectomy uh, last July. Actually, it was July eighteenth. Oh my gosh. Um, and then we switched up my testro- testosterone shots just a, a little bit, but I'm still doing them um, every week. It's just slightly different amount since I don't have the estrogen kind of backpedaling with it. Right, <laughs> so, fighting, fighting it constantly. Right, yeah. yeah. I would think so you that almost- made it a lot easier. And I feel like now, whenever I like am a couple days later, like if I, you know, don't do it all at the same time, whatever, it's not as big of a deal. Cause I don't have that estrogen. That's kind of like, Hey, oh. what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <I'm back>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, is that something that you'll have to stay on forever? Yeah. Or- yeah. I'll, I'll have to stay on it for the rest of my life. I'm in several groups that have uh, some older guys that, you know, transitioned several, several years back when they were younger, or they were in their teens and uh, quite a few of them have switched to uh, gel. Oh. So it's literally just like a testosterone gel and they rub it on both of their shoulders every morning and that's theirs. They don't ever wow. have to do shots, anything like that. I've heard a couple of guys talk about like, it's almost like a patch that you put it on, you wear it for like three hours and then you take it off and it's basically the same thing as the gel. Okay. Um, so I could always end up transitioning into, you know, something a little easier than the shots. But honestly, for right now, I'm, I'm totally cool with doing the shots for the rest of my life. If this is what I get. <laughs> right, right. You're like, that's what it takes. I'm cool with yeah, it. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. I'd be opting for the gel as fast as possible. I'm not a big pain person. <laughs> like, oh, I can't do it. You will be on that permanently. Is there anything else that you know you'll have to do forever? You don't necessarily have to, but I know 100% that I'm going to end up getting top surgery and doing the chest reconstruction. I mean, really, other than that, I, I think I, I'd be kind of set after the, the chest surgery. I'm not really looking. There's there's a whole lot of back and forth with like the bottom surgery. So right. I don't know if I ever really want to end up doing that. Right. So I think I might just be content with doing top surgery and testosterone. <laughs> right. For those of you that might be squeamish, I'm going to ask a personal body part question <laughs> on the testosterone. Does huh? that increase the size of the clitoris? Yes, actually okay. very much so. Okay. That's what I wondered <laughs> if that body part would, the genitalia would just naturally. Yeah, increase yeah. It, it, it definitely enlarges it. Some guys honestly have a really good man, what's the word I'm looking for? A really good uh, reaction, I guess, Mm -hmm. to the testosterone and their clitoris can end up being like a couple inches long. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's what I wondered (laughs) because I thought, do you have to go through the whole surgery to actually get the male genitalia or can you just increase the size of the clitoris Um, and it's just as good? Yeah, yeah. Um, A lot of guys, too, uh, they end up doing what they call pumping. Mm -hmm. So they it's basically like, you know, uh, the like penis enlargers, but it's uh, on a lot smaller scale with like littler suction cups. You can basically pump your clitoris and actually end up getting it quite long. Um, Some guys have had enough luck that they can actually use it for penetration. Holy smokes. Wow. I know. I've kind of, I've kind of looked into that here and there. Um, There, you know, like some people say it can make you you pretty darn sensitive because it's basically just a a suction on you. So there's always a chance of like blood blisters, things like that, which kind of has stopped me because I'm like, God damn, that's a sensitive area. (laughs) Right. It's it's already sensitive. But I have looked into it and the guys that say, you know, if you do it safely, slowly, like everything will basically be okay kind of thing. Right, right. Don't go at it like a maniac. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like you're not pumping up a bike tire. Like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god that's awesome right yeah you're like take it slow take it slow <laughs> if you do the chest reconstruction uh-huh. and a lot of women have like breast reduction i would imagine it's very similar in that they're taking um take it out you're gonna end up with a little bit of a scar yeah um unfortunately mine are so large that i will have to do the the whole scar like across the bottom of them Right. Instead of doing like a lot of guys, uh, they can, if their breasts are smaller, you can do the, oh, what is it called? I think it's called like a a T puncture or something along those lines. And it's like a tiny cross stitch right in between your armpit. And they're able to like 
suck all of the fat out that way and just kind of tighten your skin. Right. But unfortunately, mine are a little too big, so <laughs> I'm going right. to have to get them cut right. off and have the scar along the bottom. I've looked at quite a few surgeons actually around the area. There's one here in Kansas City at KU Med that I, I kind of want to get like a consultation and see what that's all about. I just know it can kind of be expensive and I want to save a little more just so whenever I do the consultation, I can actually make an appointment and just kind of go from there instead of having to be like, okay, now I'll have to wait and save up this much and, you know, kind of drag it out. Right. That brings up another question as you're talking about surgery and the cost and all that. Does your insurance cover some of that, like your hysterectomy? Will it cover that? Um, So the the hysterectomy, luckily most of it was covered. Um, Right now, since I'm only 25, I'm still on my parents' insurance, which was fantastic because I had, what was it, United and Blue Cross Blue Shield. So basically what one didn't cover, the other kind of stepped up and covered majority of it. We didn't end up paying very much for my hysterectomy, which was super, super awesome. I've looked into some things with Blue Cross because the job that I'm about to go to, DHL, that's what insurance they offer. And I think that I actually might be able to get quite a bit of it covered through insurance. Um, I just have to basically get a doctor's, uh, I think it's two doctors, approval almost. Mm -hmm. Like their letter of recommendation saying like, yes, this is, you know, a needed thing. Yeah, basically just saying it's necessary. And then uh, I think I can get most of it covered. That would be awesome. Yeah. I know that has to be expensive. And there are are a lot of people that that cost keeps them, prohibits them from taking the steps that they want to take. On on the cheaper end without insurance, it can be upwards of eight thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And and luckily, like the what I was looking into, it looks like I'm gonna pay about two grand out of pocket. And that'll be for like overnight stay in the hospital and you know, like that's basically everything from me going into surgery till recovery is right. probably gonna be about two thousand out of pocket. Oh my gosh, that will be that's amazing, honestly. That's I'm super stoked. I can't wait. <laughs> I know you used to be pet groomer, so I heard you say yeah. DHL, so you're getting ready to start something new and different. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, getting ready to work for, it's basically just like a warehouse, kind of like what I did at Smart Warehousing. I don't know if you remember when I worked there right outside of high school. Just, yeah, packaging stuff, loading stuff up on a truck and sending the trucks out. It's not anything crazy. You're like, hey, it's good. And it has insurance. Yeah. <laughs> <You're thing>. Right. <laughs> During during the transition, and you're still in the transition, basically. Yeah. Who do you lean on the most? You got through that with mom and dad, and that was all great. You lean on family, friends. I mean, I feel like in the beginning. I really leaned on one of my good friends, Abby, and she kind of helped me find quite a few of like the groups and stuff that I'm in on Facebook. There's just random like private groups, I guess, on Facebook. Anybody that's part of the transgender community, like FTM instead of the MTF, can join and literally just ask questions from a bunch of guys who have experienced it. Right. <laughs> so that really helped. Uh, I, I've only used it a few times for like questions, but it definitely helps whenever I see other people asking questions or, you know, anything like that. And I can just kind of click on the comments and look through and see what everybody has to say about, you know, whatever topics are being brought up. Yeah. So do you have um, an actual group of people that you connect with and talk about things that really understand or relate to what you're going through? I mean, uh, not really in person. I, I don't really have any friends that are trans through like actually meeting them in person. I just have a couple guys, you know, that I met online through the groups, or anything like that. There was one guy, Kale, who was really close friends with Abby, actually, that helped me through a lot of the beginning stages and kind of helped me get on track to finding out like what therapists and stuff that I needed to go to and what doctors were best, like who to contact and talk to, to kind of start. Honestly, not really anybody that's, you know, trans that I talk to in person, Um, more so just kind of leaning on Nikki, my fiance. She's been absolutely fantastic since I've met her. So. (laughs) And I want to get to her, but I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to go there a little later. Right, right. Uh, I, I did kind of forget to circle back around because you were talking about you were more afraid to tell your friends because of that rejection piece. Right. And I just heard you say Abby. Now, was somebody, was Abby someone that was 
a friend before? Yeah, yeah. Um, I met her, God, I met her in like middle school because she was uh, pretty close friends with Brandon. She was in his grade. Okay. So she was kind of a family friend for a while. And then she ended up just starting to hang out with me more. And <laughs> so we became really close. But yeah, she was she was friend pre-transition. Okay. And then was she one you were afraid to tell? No, because I, I could see how open-minded she was. And uh, she was already kind of out as being bi. So she was a part of the community. And I, I felt like it was kind of a good step to tell her first. Mm-hmm. to see how somebody would react that I that I knew would be okay with it right right and then kind of move on to people that I wasn't so sure about <laughs> right so when you did tell your friends were there any of them were did you lose any friends and were you surprised by any uh, any of them that were like yeah we kind of we knew most of them were like yeah you know that doesn't surprise me uh <laughs> I, I did lose quite a few friends uh, whenever I, you know, very first told everyone after I told my parents. One of actually my really, really good friends that I uh, met, uh, I met him my junior year. So we were super close friends for the entire junior year, most of senior year. And then when I finally uh, came out to him, his uh, his family is a little more religious. Right. I think that kind of they pressured him a little bit and just. Dis- Stop talking to me because it was just kind of out of the blue. It was about a week after I told him that he just deleted me on everything, blocked me, and uh, I haven't heard from him since. Wow. But that I was, get that. Uh, that was like closest friend. And then outside of that, I mean, some, you know, acquaintances here and there have some negative crap to say. And honestly, I just kind of let it roll off. <laughs> right, right. Because it's, it's a shame that more people can't have an open mind. Now that you're out, um, and you're living as a man, do you have, do you walk around with any fears in, in the world? Right? Um, so I, I guess it was, it was a lot harder whenever I very first transitioned mm-hmm. because I wasn't quite passing. Honestly, now when, you know, a stranger sees me in a store, or whatever, driving, I am not worried because I feel like I pass well enough, you know, would, would you, would you look at me and ever think like, Oh, no. that's a girl. Like yeah. exactly. That. Now not I'm not worried, but before, like I couldn't grow any facial hair. I had a lot rounder of a face instead of so like elongated. I definitely had like more feminine features. My, my shoulders weren't as wide. My hips were definitely wider before transition. Like just little things like that were worrisome because I could tell that people were, kind of like what's going on here <laughs> kind yeah. of thing, you know? <laughs> so now honestly I I don't worry about it I can confident confidently walk into uh, any store restaurant whatever and not have any fears of somebody being like oh that's a girl or you know anything like that yeah yeah it's me you're all man like, I, yeah, there's no doubt whatsoever. Oh, we talked about support from transgender community, where you are in your transition. So the next steps are basically next step, doing yeah, the, is hopefully the just top surgery and then uh, no more surgeries after that. <laughs> what is it? Two total surgeries for you? Yep. Yep. I, I did the, like I said, the hysterectomy last July. And then I, I, I only want to do top surgery. It's just, there's uh, too many things that could go wrong, I guess, with bottom surgery. And there's a, a very big possibility that you'll just lose all feeling down there. Oh, yeah. And uh, I enjoy sex, so. <laughs> yeah, you're like, uh, no, that doesn't even sound like an option. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about Nikki for a little bit. You are engaged, and congratulations. And that yes. happens when? So, oh, gosh, she said the official date was... Hang on one second. Yeah. I just remember seeing it and I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. She has it set as January 20th. Oh, I love it. Several months. Right. You're like, wow, time flies. Quarantine has ruined everything. I feel like time doesn't exist anymore. No, it's terrible. I feel like months just flew by and I don't know what's happening. Right, right. Now, did you did you get to work at all through any of the COVID stuff? They ended up doing furlough for most of the salons through PetSmart, uh, like right whenever everything happened. So I was off work for like three months, and then they finally slowly started calling people back and getting more here and there. And then I worked for about four weeks, and then I ended up leaving PetSmart 
just a dispute with my manager. She wasn't the nicest lady and I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I figured I could take a little break from grooming, do something else for a while. And then hopefully the plan is either getting a van and doing mobile grooming at some point in the future, or just going to like a private mom and dad kind of shop, like just a, a little shop somewhere. Not a fan of the corporate side of things. Right, right. That's yeah. so much more. It's just corporate. It's just right. corporate. They got to do what they got to do, and I'm not always a fan, so. Right, right. Yeah, there's no, there's a compassion piece missing, I think, for human beings. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Corporate, right. <laughs> do you guys have a date set? We don't have a date yet. Um, our plan is going to be actually going to Colorado. We are going to go on a hike. Um, we haven't picked what trail yet, what we want to do. Um, but we're going to do a ceremony somewhere in the mountains because we both think Colorado is absolutely beautiful. I just think it would be a blast to just do a little couple day trip and just have kind of me and her and do our own little thing. And then at some point after come back and do like a reception kind of thing here in Kansas City and actually invite like all the family and stuff. All right. Do like a, a party. But right. Yeah. Yeah. The ceremonies for us and then everybody can celebrate after. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that idea. I think that's great. When you met Nikki, uh -huh. you're a man. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what, how does that conversation go when you're like, Oh yeah, by the way. Luckily, I could tell pretty quickly with Nikki that she was super open-minded. We became really close friends after we met. Honestly, it was just, you know, platonic at first. We just hung out all the time. She would come over to my place and we would drive around and just, you know, hang out and do whatever. There was one night that I was just like, you know what? What if this could be something more? And I decided to just go ahead and tell her early on in our friendship that I was trans, just in case it led to anything else. And and it did <laughs> for you um, so right we we had drove around for like 30 minutes and we had just pulled back up to my house and I basically was like all right I, I have something to tell you you know let me know when you're ready kind of thing and she was like yeah go for it and I just did basically the same thing I did with my mom and I was like I'm transgender but I was like I don't know how you feel about that or like what you're gonna say but whatever it is let's get it all out now and go from there <laughs> let's talk about it yeah oh my gosh and she and she honestly she was mind blown she had no idea that I was trans and then she she was super super accepting she I don't think I could have had a, a sweeter response from anybody she was like you know who who you are does not matter in that term of gender or sexuality or anything like I just want to hang out with you you're an awesome person like she was super great about it oh I love that that's awesome and then it's just slowly blossomed into yeah yeah wonderful. we just kind of yeah started hanging out more and more getting flirty and <laughs> now here we are <laughs> okay so how long did you know nikki before you got engaged so i met her in march of 2019 not quite a year before we got engaged oh that's fantastic i love it and i love that you were friends first before yeah anything. I just think that's the best. Oh, honestly. Yeah. Cause now yeah. like she, she is still like my best friend outside mm -hmm. of being my partner. Like I, I love that we can have days or, you know, moments, whatever, where honestly, it doesn't have to be anything romantic. Like sometimes we just hang out and we're just chilling. <laughs> like it doesn't have to be, you know, always all the time relationship, 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 right. which is super cool. That is, that's a wonderful, wonderful way to start having friendship. And then the dreaded question that every engaged and married couple gets is, do you want to have kids or when are you going to have kids? <laughs> <laughs> we do not actually. Right. Honestly, with how small Nikki is, uh, pregnancy would really dwindle down her health. Uh -huh. um, if we ever did anything with kids, it would be like years, years down the road. And we have talked about like adopting older children in the foster system. Right. So like the 16, 17 year olds that are just going to age out and not actually ever have, you know, that home base. Yes. Um, we just kind of, if we do anything, which we might not, <laughs> but if we end up doing anything, that would be it. And that's, that's interesting. I feel like there is a trend around your age group that is more leaning towards not having kids. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
right? Or adopting. And I think that's yeah. fantastic. I, I think it's I, awesome. I I love that people are adopting more and more. And I honestly, I hope that we could just have every kid in the foster system somehow figure out either a home base or an actual safe place outside of some of these cruddy foster homes. I know that there are really awesome foster parents. Some of my friends are friends with people that do like fostering for smaller kids or even like young adults. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. That is super, super cool. But I just, I hope that my generation is the one that kind of kicks it into gear with adopting instead of feeling the need to like have your own biological kid. Right, right. I think that's another societal pressure that is just passed down. This is the way it's always been. This is the way it always should be. Right, right. You just have to continue in this pattern, but it's okay to do something different and to goes back to there are so many kids in foster care. And yes, there are a ton of wonderful foster care parents and homes out there and group homes. However, there are still those that are suffering and struggling and running away from bad foster yeah. homes. So if people would foster, it would just be an amazing I know. amazing thing. Get those kids out of there. Kudos to you. I think that's fantastic. Thanks. Staying outside the box all the way. I love it. <laughs> right. We don't, like, wanna, we don't want to add anything else into this uh, shit show that is the U.S. right now. <laughs> right? The whole world. What are you talking about? Just yeah, honestly, like, honestly. The whole world. I was like, what the heck is going no, on? Yeah, we, we figure if uh, if we end up do, doing anything that, you know, why not help some kids along the way and give some kids that don't have anything, either a home or kind of a, a start into life? I, you know, it, I think it always just goes back to the the love and the the feeling loved and, and wanted and cared for and safe. Right, right. Being able to do that. It just, it just sucks whenever like they, you know, just age out of the foster system because like I couldn't imagine not being able to just call my mom one day just because I'm feeling down or, you know, I don't know what to do or even, you know, calling like you or Kelly or anybody like I, you need kind of that like family base and people to kind of rely on because once you're like out of foster system that's just kind of it and that sucks now you're on your own 18 right right like good luck <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, I can't even imagine I need to connect with you about if you know people that are fostering because I I would love to have a conversation because foster yeah. is it's I'm not able to get you in contact with some people. Yeah, that would be fantastic. I would love that. I, I want to wrap with a huge thank you for coming on and being open and sharing all things with me and the world, basically. Of course. <laughs> uh, and I appreciate that you are on the journey that is true to you. It's just huge self-love and it's such a wonderful message. That is the reason I had to talk to you because there are so many people that are heterosexual and struggle with self-love and really being true to who they are and making promises to themselves and keeping them. And your journey is just an amazing, your life is amazing. You're an amazing human being. And I love your spirit and laughter. Like every time I'm around you, I laugh and have a great time. The love is real. I love it. Oh, I love you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes, I'm glad absolutely. that I could actually talk to you. You know, is there anything else that you've been curious about through um, all these years? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was it. I just wondered when, you know, I have heard so many times that most gay people know they are gay around five or six. Yeah. And I, I mean, what's kindergarten? Really? That, that's like five mm -hmm. or six, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I honestly, like, I've never really felt that attraction to men. Right. It just, I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I, Girls are just too pretty. <laughs> exactly. Right? There is something wonderful about a woman, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to really end all of my conversations with the final five. I call it the final yeah. five. First one is, what's your favorite word? My favorite word is probably moist. Moist. Just because it has always killed my mom. So when I was younger, I would say it constantly because she hates it. <laughs> so it just slowly became like my actual favorite word. I just think it sounds so funny. Just right? moist. <laughs> there are so many people that hate that word. I know. It's crazy. So many. And I'm like, what is this a word? Moist. Yeah. Right. They're all cringing right now. If they're listening. It's not your favorite word. Sorry. <laughs> not sorry. 
So what turns you off? Bad smells. Oh. If somebody smells gross, automatically not having it. Don't want to be around them. Backing away. Back yeah, away. exactly. Like I make sure to spray cologne every morning, deodorant every morning, brush my teeth. Like I cannot do bad smells <laughs> like, at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, what sound or noise do you love? Cat's purr. What? A cat's purr. Oh, a cat's purr. I thought you said a cat's prayer, and I was like, (laughs) (laughs) a cat's purr, yes. Oh. Yeah, whenever I just cuddle with my my cat, uh, the reason that I adopted him is because he purrs so loud. When he was a kitten, he literally sounded like a motorboat. Like, as soon as you touched him, he would just start, like, yeah, just as loud as possible. He's gotten a little bit quieter the older that he's gotten, but still, every time I cuddle with him, he just, it's calming. (laughs) I love that. That's a great one. Okay, this one's dangerous, but what's your favorite cuss or curse word? Fuck. Absolutely. (laughs) You can use it in any sentence. (laughs) Yeah, right? Anytime. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I would imagine if I asked Vanessa, that would be her favorite Same word. Thing. Too. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, it's got to yeah. be. <laughs> I love it. What profession, I think you kind of answered this earlier, but what profession other than the one you're doing now would you like to attempt? So, I mean, if we're going outside of other than grooming, mm-hmm. honestly, I would want to be a truck driver. I think it would be super awesome to do like state to state uh, semi driving. And if I ever eventually get my own truck, then I could just bring Nikki and whatever pet we have at the time along with us. And we can just see random things while we're dropping off or like after any sort of deliveries on the way back home, whatever, we can stop and look anywhere. And I love being in the car, driving around, listening to music, whatever. Yes, so yes. I think that would be super fun. Yes. And I think I, I've heard of the couples do that. They you know, oh, yeah. get older and they're like, all right, let's do it. We don't have kids at home. We're going to right, exactly. drive in. I'm along for the ride and we're going to see stuff. Right. I, I, We could just in, eventually see all 50 states and try and pick like two or three things in every state that we want to see specifically and kind of go from there. <laughs> yes, I love that. I think that is fantastic. Well, is there anything that I might have left out that you would love to share that we didn't talk about? No, not really. I mean, nothing that comes to mind, really. You asked quite a few questions. I, I think we did a good. <laughs> I think we did a good, too. And that was, it was fun. It was very informative. And my hope with having you on is that I'm sure there are many other young people that are in the place you were as a teenager at 18, maybe even in the beginning stages of transition right. that this touches them and they to know that you get to the other side of it. And like you said, what I, what I loved was if somebody can't accept it, those probably aren't your people anyway. Yeah, exactly. Right. You, so, you got to learn that message. sometimes it's, it's better to just cut ties than to try and hold on to something that really is never going to be. Cause if you have to convince somebody who you are, isn't a bad thing, then you, you really don't need them in your life. Oh, right. Absolutely. Like if, if it takes any sort of convincing or begging for somebody to just be your friend, then you don't want that. No. And then the other piece of it is there are a lot of people like me out there. We're open. We're willing to to learn. And but we don't know that much about the gay and lesbian world and all right. that it encompasses. It's not just gay and lesbian, but the LBGT right, right. plus <laughs> world. There's just so much there. And the the message is we're all human. We're just human beings who want yeah. love and who want to love. I love that. Thank you so much for Absolutely. coming and sharing. And to the rest of you, thank you for joining us. I hope you learned something, maybe opened your mind a little bit, your heart a little bit. And <laughs> we will talk with you all soon. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks.